people used to ask me all the time because they used to have this rule where you would need to have at least 50 conversions in one week period in order to even use conversion campaigns. That is not true anymore. There are a variety of different types of campaigns on Pinterest. And so depending on what kind of target metrics and KPIs you're wanting to look at, you can make changes and use different kinds of campaigns accordingly. There are a lot of new beta tests that actually just came out that are kind of a little outside the scope of this talk, but we can definitely talk about it more. If you have more questions, definitely message me. There's a lot of really good opportunity that's coming. And here's just one example for a shopping campaign that we're seeing just really crazy numbers at scale testing and trying out a lot of different types of products. This is a beauty brand that we're working on some of their bundles and some of those things to get ready for holidays. And, and just, um, we were kind of playing off some of the mother's day bundles and those kinds of things and just getting some really, really good results. And so that's really exciting. And so Pinterest really does have powerful potential for a lower CPAs, consistent long-term ROAS. Over time, we really do see those lower CPAs than Facebook, than Google over time. So maybe not necessarily in the first three or four months. Sometimes it can take six months, sometimes less, and we get really low CPAs right out of the gate. So when you're choosing your objectives for paid ads, you wanna think about what are you trying to, what's your objective? <laughs> of course you wanna get sales, um, but also how, how deep in the process, how big is your audience, for example, how deep in the process are they with your brand? Or do you still need to do some more warm up education? In which case you may want to run some brand awareness and you may have brand awareness is the only place where you can focus on getting and target an intentional CPM. So if you want to get in front of a bunch of different folks and you want a low cost per impressions or cost per lead, this is a great place to do it. Traffic campaigns are awesome. They're not algorithm based. So that's one thing you have to think about but they are really good for top of funnel, high quality traffic, and we also have auto bidding options. Um, they just rolled out a full CBO campaign, so now you can only optimize for campaign uh, budget optimization, so you wanna make sure and consider that. But I actually, so far, it's doing better for some of our top of funnel campaigns so that we can actually spread the budget out better um, per ad set versus on the campaign level, so that's going really well. If you have an app and you want to try some app install campaigns, we've got a lot of different options for those. You do need to have an app install partner, MMP partner. So definitely take that into consideration. We can absolutely retarget on Pinterest. You've got all of your general normal retargeting audiences. So you can upload lists. We've got actalikes they're called versus lookalikes on Facebook. And so you absolutely have the opportunity to create an audience size based on whatever you want to do your high LTV list is what we usually do, high long-term value purchasers, and then also anything, past purchasers, engagers, that kind of thing. And so there are a lot of different strategies for that. We And then we run a lot of conversion campaigns, which are algorithm-based, and they are deeper funnel objectives, whether it be lead, add to cart, or actually purchase, checkout. You can definitely do that in conversion campaigns, but those do take longer to warm up. People used to ask me all the time because they used to have this rule where you would need to have at least 50 conversions in one week period in order to even use conversion campaigns. That is not true anymore in order to use the campaign. Sometimes if you have a brand new account, you may have to apply internally or submit a ticket in order to be able to use conversion campaigns. But in general, those restrictions don't really apply anymore. But I still use that as a really good rule of thumb to try and get those conversions right away. And that's gonna make a huge difference on your account, especially with conversion campaigns. The faster you can get conversions in there, the better it's gonna optimize long-term, the better it's gonna utilize your budget, that kind of thing. And then shopping campaigns, I love shopping campaigns. So if you have enough products, I highly recommend that we use shopping campaigns because we see really, really good results. This is the only place where you can do dynamic retargeting on Pinterest. So absolutely, if you have a good amount of products, this is a great place to start. And so, and then again, with shopping campaigns, they're releasing new features all the time. You've got multiple feed options now, which is really cool. So we can test and try different feed apps, different types of feeds. We can adjust the feeds, choose different products, that kind of thing. And then we can also target interest keywords and audience-based target targeting inside shopping campaigns. And so here's just a quick example where you can see 
different product groups. If you want to set up different product groups, you can definitely test best sellers. We've got a few product groups that'll automatically populate. We can do different kinds of shopping ads and collection ads, that kind of thing. And you can definitely test and try things out. We see really, really crazy, ridiculous results sometimes with shopping. And so here's just a really, here's one good example. <laughs> and then here's another good example at scale as well with almost a seven X ROAS. So shopping is amazing. Mm -hmm.